Does our nation respect blue collared workers? Skilled labor is in decline. Baby boomers are retiring and there's no one to fill their jobs. No, no, wait, that's not true. There are plenty of people to fill those jobs, but not enough people who are willing or able to do those kinds of jobs. Kids nowadays do like the idea of a side hustle, but they want it to be cool and trendy so they can get a bunch of TikTok views or Instagram followers. Lawn mowing is not cool or trendy. You know, it's strange to me to see a record number of people nowadays quitting their jobs. But as we as a country are starting to get back to normal levels of unemployment, but I see help wanted signs all over town. Why is that? What is going on in our country? You know, I enjoy watching Mike Rowe on Dirty Jobs as he tours the country highlighting dirty jobs. He has a whole campaign around dirty jobs and blue collared workers. He is trying to change our country's fundamental thinking about blue collared or skilled labor jobs. I'd like to talk about that today and how this is impacting our industry in the lawn care and what if anything, we can do about it. Biggest thing I've found in the last year or so in general is that there has been a shift in our country's thinking to the haves and have nots. Not only, in our, not only is our country divided politically from the pandemic and other different social if, issues, there has been a general malcontent and divide between employees and their employers. Why would I work for you when I can do it myself and make twice as much money? I find that happening to me in my company several times over the years. I have a good employee, but after a couple of years, he finds that he's making at most 20 bucks an hour and me, the owner of the company, is making two or three times that. So what happens? The employee leaves my company and starts his own company for himself. This happened several times. And the first time it happened, I was so offended and upset thinking to myself, how could he do that? I taught him everything I know. And he takes that and starts his own lawn mowing company across town. Oh, what an ungrateful SOB. But now I'm older and more mature. I find myself wishing him luck and helping him out over his first year. You know, he's a smart guy and I want the best for him. You know, that has happened several times to me, like I said, over the years, and that's okay. But our country in general is seeing that on a massive scale, an employee quitting a larger company to start his own small business. Nothing wrong with that. But then later, this new small business owner working for himself finds he needs to hire employees and the cycle starts all over again. The new employee is unhappy because of his low pay or whatever. He sees the new business owner making two or three times that, and he quits to start his own thing. You know, it, it starts, it happens a lot, and not just, but it's not just in our industry, but it is most clear in our industry. And how do we stop it? Or should we stop it? Is it a good thing? Yes, I'd say generally, I'd say it is a good thing that folks want to make a better life for themselves and those who work hard can be successful. You know, the same cannot be said for other parts of the world. No matter how, how hard you work, you're still going to be poor. So now we have the dilemma of employee versus employer and that cycle. Hmm. So I'm thinking about it myself now. What do I do? Stay solo or solo-ish or maybe hire a buddy to help me couple days a week or do I scale up and get several employees that will just end up leaving after a couple years? Well, I can't tell you what to do. I can tell you my own experience and what I've gone through and maybe you can learn through my experiences and make an educated guess as to what you could do. I've had as much as five employees working for me at one time over two trucks. One truck solid mowing, three employees busting their butts 40 hours a week, 25 yards a day, five days a week, and the other truck with two guys in it doing trim jobs, fertilizing, bark installs, weeding, light landscaping, and other odd jobs. So you're thinking some quick math in your head. Wow, at 125 yards, it's say 50 bucks a piece, is over $6,000 a week 
plus the other truck making maybe 2,500 bucks a week. That's about $35,000 per month. <laughs> well, it's never that much in reality. In my head, I have a rule, the one third rule in business. Now what's the one third rule? One third profit for the business, one third of the operational cost for, for the business, and then one third for the labor cost. So of that $35,000 a month after taxes, labor burden, operational expenses, the business would make $10,000 a month. Or the $10, out of the $10,000, I would pay myself, say, five or $6,000. I wouldn't really see that much money because you know, I have my own personal living expenses. I have my mortgage and my bills and stuff like that. But still, not bad. That, you know, I, I still like $60,000 a year. So what's the problem? Well, no problem, really. It's just kind of a pain in the butt running a big, busy business. Last year, on the other hand, during the employee shortage, I made more money with one part-time guy helping me out. I raised rates, lost a few clients, but who cares? I made more money than I've ever made. You know, having more clients and more employees doesn't always translate into more money. Now, if I could get the business to pay me $10,000 a month for doing next to nothing, and I could spend my summer on my yacht sailing the Caribbean, then I would consider myself have to have made it. But until then, I'm stuck working my tail off. It's a new year. Am I going to hire some employees? Or am I going to go solo? Or maybe next to solo? I haven't decided yet. What do you think? Leave a comment below. If you're enjoying this video, hit the like button and subscribe. I guess what rubs me the wrong way just in general is the discontent between employee and employer, the haves and the have nots. I think there is dignity in any kind of work, getting up, working every day, taking care of your family and being responsible with your money is an important virtue that is lost nowadays. It doesn't matter if you're working for a company or for yourself. Working for yourself is way more difficult than working just for a big company. You know, if I could get on with a big company with benefits and paid time off, time off and sick leave, like 401k, you know, and those other things, and the job was pretty not good and it didn't drive me totally insane, I would do it. Problem with me is that I got a type A personality and I have trouble following orders from stupid bosses or clawing my way up into middle management in the corporate America. I tried that in a previous career and I couldn't stand it. But if you got an even temper and you're halfway normal, I just say go and work for someone else, put in your nine to five, get paid and let someone else worry about the business. Like Mike Rose, Dirty Jobs, I'd like to encourage you that college is not always the answer. Vocational training and skilled labor are in high demand. You can get skilled labor and often they will train you for free. Electricians, plumbers, heavy equipment operators, bus drivers, whatever, they have paid training. And after a period of time, you get accredited and become a true professional in that industry with no college debt and will probably make more money than your college buddies. Unless you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, going to college is probably a waste of money. Well, or maybe at least getting a two-year degree is, is more your speed. Less expensive and still gives you a little edge. I personally do have a four-year degree, and yes, it gave me a leg up sometimes, but I'm in my mid 40s now, still paying for my college loans from 20 years ago. College loans can be so crippling, especially if you're a young college grad. Whew, good luck buying a new car with $50,000 of student debt or buying a house. You will be unemployed, living in your mom's basement, looking for a job, while your counterpart, on the other hand, has six years of training and experience and is now, say, a journeyman electrician making $75,000 a year. He's probably got a new truck and thinking about buying his first house. <laughs> what are you doing? Playing video games, waiting for that perfect job to land in your lap while sitting in your mom's basement. Now I know, lawn mowing may not be trendy, but it gives me my winters off to spend more time with my family and it gives me enough money to have some cool stuff like a house, trucks, and fun toys. So please, if you've gotten anything out of this video, 
please hit the like button, comment on your favorite part, and subscribe below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.